Can I have the room kitchen for you to give you to work with? Mate, make it easy for yourself. Right, Ruben, get your arm under there. Are you winding me up now? I've got this old rewirable fuse board. I think I've had enough of kneeling down under a cupboard all day. Broken back. Just have a little suss out in your head what you want to do. Welcome back guys. I'm here today on a house that I had done an EICR on, I think it was last week maybe. Thankfully the customer's taken the actual cupboard off the uh, kitchen for me, uh, just for easy access. Not a really good place for a fuse board, but at least it's easy to get to. So I'm gonna change the fuse board today. I'm gonna have Luke outside doing the car charger. There was a lot of down lights that failed, you know, just you've got single installation hanging out of them, earth's cut off. The customer has actually changed them all himself to IP rated fittings. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just send Ruben round, pull them down, check the connections, check it's all as it should be. And then it saved Ruben a job for a few hours. Customers left us tea and coffee out. So starting the morning with a nice strong coffee and uh, I'll crack on under here. Maybe I can show you a few bits. You can sort of jump between and see how Luke's getting on with his car charger and Ruben's doing a few bits and we'll do some bonding as well. So um, yeah, stick around and we'll show you how we're doing it. So just been going around, taking these down, uh, down lights down, just checking the connections, just seeing if they work and things like that. There's about 10 down lights upstairs. They all seem to be pretty good. I've still got a couple more in here but there is one above the stairs that looks a bit dodgy. I'll show you that when I get to it. So one thing I like to do with a board change is just be sort of really prepared. So I like to take a lot of notes and make sure I know what I'm doing as I go along. That's the old order of the circuits that the customer had already printed off for me and then I've wrote down a new order, including the car charger circuit, and I've done it in an order, highest breaker to lowest. What I can do is I've laid out my breakers in order, ready to go on the board, and as I take the old fuse board off the wall, what I can do is write the number that corresponds to the circuit that I wanna go in its new order. So when I've got the board off, my cables are numbered one, two, three, four onwards, and then when it's in the new board, I can literally just grab the cable, right, I want to put circuit one away first, find number one, put it in. So I think as long as you're doing that, then you can't really go wrong as long as your numbers don't fall off. And another thing I like to do before I stick the cables away in the breakers is if I need to do an end-to-end -end test on the ring main, I'll have my tester next to me and I'll, just, I'll do it and then it can be dressed into the board and it's not got to be pulled out. So... I feel with a board change, it's just good to take your time, do it in like a good method, and um, the more you do, you'll just pick up a routine, but everyone does them differently, but the more tips you can pick up from people, you find your own way of doing it, and um, yeah, it should go smoothly. Okay, so this is where the board is under this cupboard, but thankfully there was a, a big frame and door on here, and. It's nice that the um, customer's removed it all for me, so I've got a nice big open space to work in. Basically, we've got this old rewirable fuse board, so we're gonna get rid of that, and we'll probably move these isolators and spurs to suit with the new board location. As long as you keep a nice charged light with you when you knew it, if you know you're doing a board change, charge it up the night before, just um, nothing worse than being sort of cut short halfway through a day with a light cutting out and then working off your phone light or something so um, try to just prepare for the next day what if you know what you're doing and um, should go all right just a little update so 
got the old wooden relic off the wall. None of the, well, a lot of the earths weren't even sleeved or anything. I've labelled up all my cables according to my bit of paper, what order I'm putting them in. So the tails I'm going to pull out and we'll pull new 25 mils through from the meter box the other side of the wall. We're going to drill through for the EV cable. And then these circuits here, they're literally like, this is the cooker cable going to the isolator. You've got another cable here going to the hob and you've got another one going to the extract fan. They're all so close. I'm just going to change these at the isolators. It's just going to make things a lot easier when I'm putting the board back. I've got nice length of, on the um, cables to dress in. So really it's only these circuits coming down the capping that's going to be the old ones. And depending where I put the board, I should be able to cut some of this cap in a bit higher and that's going to give me some more length on these old ones. There's nothing worse than sort of trying to struggle with a tiny bit of cable in the board and I don't really like to extend cables if I don't have to. So um, before you install it, just have a little suss out in your head what you want to do. So I'll probably leave them two isolators there. I'll butt that up to it. I'll move this one over to the side and then you can sort of work out what you want to knock out where you're gonna put your grommet strip and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm gonna crack on and get this prepared and then I'll show you the next bit. Right, so luckily there's an isolator here. The meter guys have already been and upgraded all this. So I've got that turned off. The old tails are taken out, so the main earth's only a 6mm, so I'm going to take that out. Then I'm going to take the 6mm gas bond out and we'll run a new one across. This one I'm guessing is doing the water, but it just goes up the wall somewhere, so I'm going to take that out and I'm going to put it into a main earth terminal down here somewhere. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll run a new 10mm to it anyway, I'll run a new 10mm to the gas and I'll run a 16 mil from the earth terminal through to the board. Through that stuffing gland, so it's out my way. Yeah. Comes in the way. Once that comes off. Oh, that other one has to come off as well, that end one. Oh, it's curling on itself. I think that goes all the way to the back. Yeah, that one there. Yeah, they've just drilled the tiniest little hole big enough That's for that. the cable. Mate. I'll pull it all out here first then. Voodoo going on. There's literally a hole right next to. I don't know how you got oh. to drill it for. Hey. <laughs> right, Ruben, get your arm under there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Mum's so low. Where's. Does the pipe come through that cupboard? No, it doesn't. Uh, well, it does and it doesn't. <laughs> Like, huh? there's a there's a tiny little gap like that where you can see the pipes. And then there's like a is there like a, a, a stopcock or like a yeah yeah. And then just above there it's on the copper, twist. on the copper we'll put a bonding clamp. But yeah. if it comes up into a cupboard, we'll do it in a cupboard so it's easier.
All right, so boards up, all the earths are away. What I ended up doing is moving all the isolators just down one side to keep it all neat. Recabled the hob, extract fan and cooker rather than use the old cables. So that's all nice, new and fresh. We're gonna go stop for a bite to eat and then all I've got is the breakers to put in after that and do the testing, which is good. Yeah, shout out to Unilikes. This is the second one I've ever owned and um, yeah, it's lasted up till lunchtime so far, so going good. If you haven't got one, they're definitely worth the money, I think. But yeah, go for lunch and then crack on after. Nothing room kitchen fit is given to work with. Why is the cable up the top there? Because we, we tried to do it on Why the top. Why don't you get the multi tool and cut the back out? So Are you winding it up now? <laughs> Mate, make it easy for yourself. Are you literally? I'm going to do that, seriously. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably going to run out of battery as soon as you touch it. <laughs> Broken back. Holding's drilling for the gas. Right, so here we're going to try and find a new route for the earth bonding for the gas. Um, someone decided to cut it, so we're going to have to replace it. We're going to have to find a new route and try and get it through to the meter cupboard. So what we're going to do is just drill it an angle here and hopefully come up somewhere around here. labels on there, break as well. They're in the meter cupboard. Just tidying a few things up and then when they're finished in there we'll turn it on and do the RCD tests, fill out all the paperwork. I think I've had enough of kneeling down under a cupboard all day so um, get it wrapped up and I think we've got a little call out to change a socket on another job on the way home so um, yeah don't want to hang about too much. guys that's it for today so I've been stuck under the cupboard for quite a few hours um, rearranged it all done all the isolators down one side refed new cables to them ones that were easy enough um, done all the testing let Luke and Ruben do a bit in the meter cupboard which was nice um, get them trained up on some more bits and we checked the customers down lights and they're all okay Luke done another hypervolt so he's getting better at them and yeah all in all good job so it's cracking on we got another call out to go do before we go home so we're gonna go do that and yeah catch you on the next one